since Jimmy and Bam have gone out, there's been a lot of good things we've seen from the offense, specifically in the last two games. Before that, there was been pretty much a mess, but we've seen these last two games, they found a base offensively. You know, Kyle Lowry got going with the assists last night. Duncan Robinson got going. Dwayne Dedman gave some game minutes. But talking about finding a home base, it seems like Miami's defense has basically found a home base in this time without Bam and Jimmy. You know, we're not they're not gonna be without they're not gonna be with Bam for a long period of time. Jimmy may be coming back, you know, in the near future, but they've basically survived on that end, just mixing it up. We've seen them go zone a lot of the time, but they've basically gone away from that a bit in these last two games. They've gone to a lot of different stuff. They're just surviving man on man with they go over your seven minutes. Early on, they go to these Dwayne Dedman big minutes, but they also can go to these Casey Opola, P.J. Tucker front courts, and it works as well where they can go to full-out switching, that they found these different areas of man-on-man -man that that can work. So as I want to go through here, I want to go through some of the defensive possessions last night that really showed out. Uh, Omar Yurtsevin started out in this game. He came off the bench, but we're seeing a trend lately where it feels like Miami's going to play Omer in the first half if they're down these this many guys. But by the second half, they're just going to match Denman up with the big man matchups, and they're going to go eight-man rotations with KZ and PJ uh, in the second half. It works. It's not in, you know something about Omer because, as we're going to see in this first play, Omer's actually had some really good defensive moments. Like They're using him in a decent way where he's uh, just needs playing time to figure things out, and he can kind of you know read the game in a way you'd like him to, as we see right here. What Miami's doing a ton of is they're just blitzing pick and rolls, and – relying on the backside help. They're relying on these guys to basically rotate in a high level. They're just going to go right here. Omer Yurtsevin is going to blitz them. They make the pass. They make another pass. So we're going to go back right here one time. Hero is going to slide down and tag them. Gives them half a second. Hero recovers. Omer Yurtsevin recovers. And now you're back to normal. You're back to just putting them in a weird spot. Omer Yurtsevin actually handles Tony Bradley in the post right here, blocks him and gets a nice play. Like that's all you need from Omer Yurtsevin. Like you know that he's – once he figures things out down the line, he has that great touch. He has a great ability offensively to kind of spread the floor in a way. Defensively was kind of the questions coming in. Could he survive, you know, in a drop roll? But if you're putting him out there and you're allowing him to just blitz and recover and let other guys do more of the work um, IQ-wise and positionally, then you're in a decent spot. The other minutes we've seen with Deadman, as we're going to see right here, he's done a great job. Like looking over – a lot of the things he's done, when you think back to when the report came out that Bam was going to be out four to six weeks, I think we all as a collective immediately thought the same thing. Nobody thought, oh, man, Denman's going to be in the starting lineup. You said, how are they going to handle the back of big minutes? And I think that just shows how solid of a player Denman is that nobody worries about that. And I think he's kind of exceeded expectations in that way because he's been a really great starting center for this team over this last few, few games where he's handling himself defensively. He's, you know, handling himself on the boards and he's able to score, as we saw last night, in a decent way, even hitting two threes in the first half. But defensively, as we're going to see right here, once again, Deadman's just been really solid. We're going to see him come around. They actually do a little they switch right here. So now Deadman's going to be on Lonzo. But speaking of blitzes, it's in a couple of different ways that they go about it. As you can see right here, now he has Kate Vucevic as KZ on his back, which, by the way, he's handled him, him and Giannis in a decent fashion, even though he's a little bit skinnier and probably – a little bit less strong than some of these guys. He's able to handle himself just because of his length uh, and just his skill on that end. But as we see right here, as soon as Vucevic puts his back to the basket and starts going, if you can hear the sound in this play, Denman starts kind of yelling uh, to kind of just let Vucevic know he's coming. Now he tries to make the pass. Denman breaks it up and he gets going down the floor. Like that stuff is just very important for a guy that that's not his biggest skill in the basketball court. Like, being able to find these ways, just to use these blitzes and break up passes and try to get through, um, make a team like Chicago so offensively gifted, uncomfortable, like they did against Vucevic all night. Like he had a heck of a time all night. And we're going to see right here, this is the very next defensive play. Now they go back to the straight drop. KZ just has to stay with his man on Lonzo. Lonzo feeds Vucevic and now Deadman's on his back. Because we're going to see right here, he is not going to give up any ground. Looking right here, he almost actually falls to the floor just because he almost hit a brick wall with Deadman. He tries a few more times to back him down. He ends up fading away in an awkward shot. Like that is the definition of, of uncomfortability. Like he is just so uncomfortable with Deadman's ability to guard the post with him, just his, his strength overall. Um, that stuff's important. It seemed like that was not the only time that happened. It was just a lot of that. Vucevic then had to settle for the outside jumpers and his shot was not falling. That it was all because of Deadman just creating that down low in the second quarter. So now we're going to see another one. You're going to look at Kyle Lowry at the top of the screen with his foot on the box. 
He's been, you know, amazing just with drawing charges all season. But it's just because he's so positionally sound that he knows when to get to the spot. Like, it's not easy to rotate from that corner to get to the opposite side of the floor and draw a charge and get outside the restricted zone. But he does it so often that it just seems normal. So as you can see right here, Levine drives by Duncan. It seems in a split second, uh, Lowry's already there. So go back one more time. We see him rotate over. Immediately gets to the spot, stops, and draws the charge. Like, that stuff is so important for a team that is positionally sound, as I said before. When you're relying less on switching, you're relying more on the drop and even the zone stuff that we've seen here and there, like that stuff is important. Max Struess is not known as the greatest defender, but he's not a positionally bad defender. Duncan Robinson has grown as a defender, but he's not a positionally bad defender. That this stuff is important. That's a base for Miami. They have a lot of switchy guys. Right now they don't because they're without so many, but they still have a base of just being uh, a team theme of just being positionally sound on the defensive end. Now, this is going to be this last possession. This just shows the strength of P.J. Tucker, and it's not his switching abilities I just talked about. It's just his IQ on the defensive end that he's able to do so many things in direct traffic, and you hear Swolcher talk about the way he goes about things, and you never hear him stop talking, basically, when he's out on their floor. But it's just because he knows what's going on, and he can read it so quickly that he can pick up on it. So I just want to show this one play that took basically a whole 24 second shot clock from like a PJ Tucker masterclass. We're going to see right here. It's a quick pick and roll. They're actually going to switch with Vucevic on hero. Uh, but you want to look at the backside. We're going to go back one more time and watch PJ Tucker. He's going to be guarding the corner right here. Caruso comes through. KZ's guarding Caruso and he basically directs KZ over to, you know, split the difference between those two guys and PJ's going to come over and help. Duncan basically has to blitz this pick and roll in the opposite on the strong side right here. PJ's there on Vucevic. He's already directing traffic on Duncan. You see him right here. Duncan's kind of scrambling. Looked like he was trying to find Vucevic to get a body on him. PJ's already taking care of that. Duncan's now scrambling. Duncan now gets on him because PJ was there. Now we see another pick and roll. As I go back one more time so we can watch PJ, they're going to pass it to him. Hero goes for the steal. He almost got it. PJ right here already is ready for the help. He already stops him right here. They have to kick it out now. Um, we sort of see one more time as we look at another PJ play. Vucevic's now going to try to cut to the basket on the roll right here after PJ picks him up. Here was a little bit scrambling. He didn't see him cut. He almost had him, but guess what? PJ slides over and he has him right there. So now PJ's back on Vucevic. Now Vucevic's going to come up from the screen. PJ's there for Caruso help. Now he makes the kick. PJ slides back over under, to cut off the Vucevic drive. There's one second left in the shot clock. He has to force this mid-range free throw jumper. And it clinks off the rim. Like this stuff is PJ Tucker. Like we've talked about last game, the passing stuff, stepping up to a Bam out of bio role. This stuff on the defensive end is not him stepping up to a Bam out of bio role. This is just PJ Tucker. This is just PJ Tucker being able to do so many things. I've said before, Miami's got an offensive quarterback uh, in Kyle Lowry who can direct so much traffic. But I think the more important thing of this offseason is getting a defensive quarterback. Who, who has, even when you have talented guy like the Bam Adebayo, which when healthy is probably going to be the defensive player of the year, Jimmy Butler is known as one of the best defenders in this league. But you need that leader on the defensive end that can tell you where to go and help these guys like Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero put them in their spots. That's just going to be huge, huge in playoff time when things slow down uh, and things get more and more into the half court.